Hello, everybody. This is a lovely interview that we are going to do right now. We are with a gorgeous person. I love so much his voice, her voice. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Welcome to Lady Rocco. I, it was very Hello, formal, please. you know. It's like a lady, Lady Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Well, it's more like Linda, but okay, good. Um, but thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, the love. How are you? Cohorts. How are you there? Right. Well, you know, we're still uh, in, um, always good. Uh, uh, I'll tell you why. Because, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get this rough. Not. <laughs> so this is what you have to do in these hard times, yeah? Mm. And so we we always do think music keeps my our mood up, my husband and I, yeah? And we're making videos and we're working harder than we ever worked. I mean, I'm doing so many things now that I never did before. So when that one door closes, the other one's opened up and we said, well, what else can we do? So Because true. banging your head against the same wall every day is just stupid. You say, yeah. oh, I can't go out. I can't go out. Well, then, <laughs> then you can't. Then you must do something else. Yeah. And so we're doing good. Thank you very much. And I want to start. Uh, yes. Tell us about your beginnings in the world of music. First of all, I, I, I practiced every day after school. This is why I, when by, by the time I got my first offer for a band, I was ready. Um, I would uh, come home from school, nine, ten years old, and I and I put on records. You know, but that time, the, that thing that's round, yeah, you know, those big ones. Yeah, that's a record. Yeah, <laughs> vinyl. And I would put that on because <laughs> you're young too. I would put that on every day, and I would practice. I would practice to Donna Summer to this and that. And then when I was 17, I got my first offer for a band in North Carolina, and a band that was called Black and Blue Eyed Soul. They still exist today. They're they're a fabulous band. But um, so I came to Germany, joined a group called Eyes on Fire. And this was, they were already big. They were already big in the business. That ended after a year. I went back to Las Vegas mm -hmm. and I lived there for two years. And then I came back. And then I started uh, um, in Dusseldorf first. There wasn't much happening. Then I met my husband to be. Mm -hmm. And then we came to Frankfurt and that's when my career literally took off. We went to every different club. We went and we, we, we made, uh, um, you know, connections. You shook hands. Hey, who are you singing with? Do you need a singer? I was always pushing myself. Hey, I'm, I sing backings. I don't care. I love it. Yeah. And this is how I started to get jobs. And then I started becoming famous in the live scene. Okay. I was in the studio back. with Farian, <laughs> Frank Farian. Frank yeah, Farian, yeah. yeah. I started, okay. And I became his main singer as a backing vocalist yeah and then uh and then when uh, millie vanilli came around i was right there and so i brought my twin sister jody in mm. i have a twin who also sings oh, she okay. is blonde as i am dark yeah she's <laughs> blonde. That, that. it was like it was like i fell in the wrong nest or something but anyway so and, and then we did all the millie vanilli stuff and that was uh you know and then that as you know crashed and burned <laughs> <laughs> It was, you know, and, and, and even even to this day, Millie even I'm still proud of what we did. I'm yeah. so proud sure, of that. Sure, yes. And, and, and it's a, it was great music. And I was uh, I was not hiding anything. I was a backing vocalist. My name is everywhere to be seen on that. So there was no, on my part, no hiding whatsoever. I just did mm. a studio job, basically, that yeah. really got big and got out of control. But mm. at the moment, I'm working on, uh, I'm in two films about Millie Vanilli, Um The thing is, it, it was a one of a kind thing. It, 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 this kind of thing only happened once in, in the history, giving back the Grammy um, and all that stuff. But it was the only vocal backing vocals. And I go like this backing vocals because mm -hmm. we were much more, much yeah. more than that. We got platinum records. Now, no backing vocalist gets platinum <laughs> records. Ask anybody. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I've I've sang I sang on hits all over from from uh, La Bush to, to to Falco to all that. I never got a platinum record, but I did with Millie Vanilli. I got three. So, uh, and this is what I want to say about uh, if somebody, even if you call it a backing vocal, yeah. it, it is not. It, the only difference is the zeros at the end of the money they have to pay. Mm -hmm. Um, just that we are talking about Milli Vanilli. Uh, what is your opinion about, about uh, what happened with the project? Well, you know, being that I live in Germany for such a long time, I know what kind of uh, acts that they have. They've, they've been doing this for years, uh, uh, putting a, uh, somebody who looks uh, uh, the part they want and somebody else singing it. This is not a shock. 
Um, the thing was, it was this was one song we were supposed to do. I think this thing snowballed. It was not meant to be. It was not uh, 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 diabolically planned by Frank Farian at all. It was. It just happened. That so, and that's how it started. It was not an evil uh, idea or anything, anything like that. And then this thing took off. It just rocketed. And then he says, "Linda, I'm going to need some singers." Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Wait. Here's two from um, from Munich, and and there's these two guys you know here from the Frankfurt area. Which one do I said? those guys from munich they're gorgeous <laughs> frank get those guys from munich are just beautiful yeah and so it ended up being them um uh, uh, rob and fab and and i always thought that they knew and which they did they wanted to sing but they my buddies sang it they're, they're they're army guys yeah brad howell johnny davis who just god rest his soul just died yeah. um and uh and and, and uh, no the, the first one was was charles shaw excuse me charles shaw did the rap and then uh um and yeah and then uh, girl you know it's true so so the thing is um they i think that they thought that they were going to be able to sing if something else came up on another project mm. uh that project didn't happen because millie vanilli took off and those oh. and the voices were already there you see what i'm saying yeah the men's voices were in already they could not put in a guy with an accent after that it just wouldn't have worked so anyway uh this thing hit the charts then you put those two boys on the front and it really rocketed. Yeah. So the song was already good, but you, you put that cover photo on there and, and you have, you have magic. Yeah. Right. That combination was, was, was what, was what did it was, was our voices and their faces. That, that was basically it. And, um, and it got so, and it got so big that we were recording for, for, for months. Uh, we must, I think my sister and I did 40 something songs uh, all together. That yeah. went on all different projects. Yeah, they, the real Millie Vanilli. Uh, oh, here, here, the real Millie Vanilli. Yeah, yeah. I was still wasn't in it. Yeah, mm. ask me why. <laughs> why? Because because we weren't the right color. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> simple as that. It's simple as that. Yeah. I mean, he said it. To, I even say to Frank, he, he he was on. He was always honest with me. Linda, I want all black people up there. I said, but it's the real Millie Vanilli. No, no, no. Mm. And so, and if you look at my, if you look at me now, you can imagine that I, I looked good then. Okay. It wasn't because it was the looks or anything of that sort. It was, or the voice, everything was there. What was it uh, like uh, working with Frank Farian? I worked with him for almost 10 years. I, 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 I loved working with Frank Farian. Uh, we understood each other. He said, this is what I want. He could leave the room. He could go to lunch and he would know that I was going to do it right. So, <laughs> so, and so he put me on like no mercy, uh, uh, La Bush, all this stuff that, uh, you know, and uh, whatever came out of the, the, you know, whatever came out of that studio I was on, it doesn't matter what it was. And so, and I loved working with him. He's an absolute professional. Uh, let's talk right. about, let's talk about Michael Jackson because We cannot okay. do this interview and not talk about Michael Jackson, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How did the possibility of working with Michael come about? Okay. Well, at that time, um, uh, you know, we already had our Scream Factory. And, um, and, and so we got asked, because we know so many singers, um, to, put, to put together, I don't know, uh, 25 or 50 singers together for, uh, for a show for for michael jackson and uh and 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 that's exactly what we did we put it together and we also re uh, rehearsed in our room you know we had a huge rehearsal rehearsal hall and everything there and uh and that's how that came is my girlfriend was the one who was looking for the singers and this is connections again what i'm telling you about before i sang with uh, uh, felicia taylor i sang with her we were we were buddies and when she needed somebody she came to me So, and so we got all that together. And then this was for a, a, a show called Vet and Das. And, and it was a four day thing, really. We two days rehearsing by us in Frankfurt. And then we took a bus up there with all the people 
Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and it was a live show and it was about a, a wet, uh, um, making bets, that kind of, it was the biggest live show in Germany. It doesn't exist anymore. And, um, and it was the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Premiere of the earth song. That's what we did. And you can still see it online. You can still see it. It's, it's there. To, uh, it's 1995. I believe okay. it was. And it was fascinating with him. I loved him. He came in the room, shook our hands. He was wonderful. Wow. He was so uh, down to earth and, and, and a lovely guy who knew what he wanted. Yeah. So he wanted to go up on this crane. All right. Mm-hmm. We're rehearsing this, this days of rehearsal with him too, over and over. He was a perfectionist. Wow. So in this crane, this crane, he stands on it and it goes up all the way up. And then the smoke is uh, going everywhere. The white shirt. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. You remember it? Okay. The white shirt. And, and he wanted to hang outside of that. And so, so, so in the middle of the song, you hear, you hear this from the producer. Click. Um, Mr. Jackson, I uh, I don't think we're going to have to, we're not going to be able to allow you to do that. This is against all rules here. You could hurt yourself badly. Thank you. Click. And then so Michael looks at him and he goes, sir, I'm going to come down. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Wait, that's how we talk. Okay. So he comes down the crane and he goes up and, he, and you just, everybody could hear it. And he goes, I'm going to tell you something. This is my show. I'm going to do what I want to do, or I'm not doing it at all. And the guy just went, Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was it was so funny. And everybody went, Yeah, so that's how it's done if you're Michael Jackson. <laughs> anyway, so um that, that was very funny. Click carry on. Um wow. and then uh so we so, so on the last rehearsal, he said, I want you to do it without me. I'm gonna sit where the audience sits. So he's sitting there with his management, with his thing, with this, that, and the other, in the front row watching us like this. All right. And we're and we're coming out on stage. You know, so we don't have him on stage for the cue. Yeah? Mm-hmm. yeah. You have to know what you're doing. See, this is what he wanted to know, that we know this. And so we'd finish the thing and, and he, I'll never forget it as long as I live. Are you ready? Yeah. He stands up and he applauds us like this. He claps wow. for all of us. We all burst into tears. Oh God, that was so sweet. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so it was a wonderful experience. And um, yeah, that was the Michael Jackson story. Another great group um, that you integrate uh, was Master Boy in the 90s. It's a it's a project that right. uh, I really love. I really love Master Boy. Um, tell us about uh, how you joined them. Okay, well they they came to me. Um, uh, the thing was, I had just had my hit "Power of American Natives" uh, that went uh, that was in the in the in the charts for 28 weeks. Um, it went gold and platinum everywhere, and because of that, they contacted me when Trixie left. When she left, they needed a new singer. So they came to me and they go, um, so I'm sitting there across from Enrico. And he goes, well, we're not going to tell you who we are yet because uh, because I didn't recognize them. I didn't recognize them. I didn't know who I was talking to. Oh. Um, yeah. So, so no, I didn't. I, I wasn't in that scene at all. I was in the really rockish, more like a hard dance core scene. Yeah, it was a whole different scene. So anyway... Um, And so, um, and so I made, I, I didn't, I didn't really, at that point, I, I didn't really care whether I got it or not, uh, to be honest. I mean, because I, I didn't know, who, thank God, I didn't know who, who it was. And so, and at the end, and then he goes, okay, well, we can tell you now we're, we're Master Boy. And I went like this. <sighs> I'm sorry, I still don't know who you are. <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> I swear to you. Lataro, I swear to you, I was, I, I actually, I wished I had known who they were. Their faces were, 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 were it, it, I just felt sorry for them. This went, what? She didn't know who we are. We're like huge. What are you talking about? So anyway, and I, and I still got the job. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was that. And so I joined and it was wonderful it, for me. It was like jumping on a moving train. 
mm-hmm. joining Masterboy because they were so big in the business. And I mean, I had to learn to do the whole show, 60 minute show. Uh, we, we, we had to do a whole new album. Then there was the photo sessions. And then they, uh, there was the hair thing and, and, and the videos. And, and, and it was the most exciting time. Again, I knew how lucky I was the whole entire three years. I, I had a three year contract and and I stayed the three years and it was wonderful. We did. I got to actually do a duet with uh, uh, with with Freddie Mercury. Please. I mean, what more do I want? Yeah. Really? When we did, uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, I want to break free. He wasn't alive when this happened, but but the group agreed. Uh, so the guys, you know, the guys in, in Queen said, it's OK, you can do this. Let's hear it before you bring it out. And so when we were done, so we got all the 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 master what yeah. he what, what Freddie Mercury sang. All of his vocals, b- good, bad, and the ugly, wow. everything. He never wow. sang anything wrong once. Wow. wow. <laughs> this guy was so amazing. Yeah. Wow. And I said, I-, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. I can't sing with him. I'm not good enough. I kept saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it was perfect because I went on to do other stuff. So that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're still we're still uh, in good contact. We have we have a good uh, rapport with each other. And so uh, uh, we, you know, yeah. So yeah, we nice. still we still uh, get so along. Nice. Yeah. I I maybe I know the answer, but if you could go back in time, would you change something or not of your life? No, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Every move I made brought me to a better place. Every move I made was was a was a decision that I made, and if I had to do it over again, I probably might. What if I went another? If I went another way, I would probably land in good things too. So I'm saying I wouldn't change it. I think that uh, uh, I, I couldn't imagine it any 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 better than that. Uh, one thing I would like to change is my my younger years in in high, in school where the where the kids were so mean. <laughs> Don't be mean in the schools, you little brats. Because school <laughs> school is not real life. When you get out, there's going to be somebody out on the outside getting ready to do this to you. Yeah. So school is not life. That's just just a pretend area. So don't bully and be nice to people. Yeah. All right. That's all I want to say. Great. Uh, so uh, tell us about your projects uh, for the future. We want to know. Well, you know, I'm still recording um, uh, because DMN Records uh, uh, with uh, Crassy. Hi, Crassy. And um, also Andy Stead. Yeah. Uh, Andy Stead from England. He produces all, all my stuff, and uh, so so since 2017, I, I had been recording again and and doing good, good old dance music. I love it, and it's like rock dance more in that direction. And um, and then I got together. I'm getting together with some girls in the business uh, who are also Euro dance girls. I'm uh, on my Facebook page. You can take a look at the pictures with. Uh, Um, you know, so with Samira and and Anne and and people like that, and we we're planning a project. So um, let's hope that that works out. I, I like to see uh, the the powerful girls get together, and then it'll just go bam, yeah, but bam, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put put all that put all that power and energy in one record. That would be fabulous. Yes, and I think that we and need. That's it. what I'm working on. I think that we need it. <laughs> yes, yes, I think so too. <laughs> well, my friend, it was very nice this interview, all your words. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And I wish you the best thank with you. all your projects on the future. It was very nice to meet you. So Wait, thanks. I'll look you I'll look you in the eyes now and say, Lataro, yeah. you are such a sweetheart. And God bless all your fans over there in Argentina. I hope that I can see you all one day, really, yes, really. Yes. And um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no if you all to were to invite me to dinner or something to, at your house where you're actually cooking, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, honey. Anytime. Again, if there's something comes up and maybe after the films come out or something and there's something new to talk about, yes, let's of do it. I, I am here. Okay. Great, great, great. Thank all you very right, much. Honey. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care. <laughs>